Investigate a VLAN implementation. The addressing table. Three switches. And nine PCs. Observe broadcast traffic in VLAN implementation. Ping from PC1 to PC6. Wait for all the link lights to turn to green. Okay. If one uh, link, if one line is orange, wait a minute and all indicators should be green. Click simulation tab. Okay, click here, simulation. Add simple PDU tool, click PC1, the source, and then click PC6, the destination. This is the PDU, add simple PDU. The source is PC1, click, and the destination is PC6, click. Now you will see two PDUs. Capture forward. Okay, observe the ARP request as they traverse the network. Okay, capture forward goes to S2. Capture forward from S2 to S1. Capture forward from S1 to S3 and from S1 to PC7. Capture forward. From S3 to PC4, capture forward, ICMP fails. You can see ICMP fails. Click again, click again. Okay. Um, view of previous events. Were the ping successful? Explain. No. The pings were not successful because PC1 is on a different VLAN than PC6, which won't allow these devices to communicate with each other because they, they are separated logically. Okay, the source is PC1, the destination was uh, PC6. PC1 is placed on 172.17.10 network because uses subnet mask 24 and PC6 uh, place it on a different network 172.17.30 and subnet mask 24. Okay, they are on different networks. Examine simulation panel. Look at the simulation panel. Where did S3 send the packet after receiving it? Okay. Uh, Okay, S3. Okay, you can go back one step. Click here on go back. One more time, go back. Okay, and capture forward. And you can see how S3 sent the packet to PC4. Okay, and the answer is S3 sent the PDU to PC4 because it was on the same VLAN as PC1. Okay, because that ARP request was a broadcast. Okay, look at PC1 is on 172.17.10 network and PC4 172.17.10 network. Okay, PC1 network 172.17.10 and um, PC4 172.17.10, both are in the same subnet, in the same network, same subnet mask, okay? And in normal operation, when a switch receives a broadcast frame on one of its ports, it forwards the frame out all other ports. 
Notice that S2 only sends the ARP request out faceter node 1 to S1. Okay. Okay, go back, go back, go back. Capture forward, okay, S2 to S1. Okay. Also notice S3 only sends the ARP request out faceter node 11 to PC4. Okay, capture forward. Uh, this S3 only sends to PC4 using Facetter Net 11. PC1 and PC4 both belong to VLAN 10. Okay, PC6 belongs to VLAN 30. Okay, PC6 172.17.30, subnet mass 24. Because broadcast traffic is contained within the VLAN, PC6 never receives the ARP request from PC1. Because PC4 is not the destination, it discards the ARP request. The ping from PC1 fails because PC1 never receives an ARP replay. Okay, PC4 discards and capture forward, ping fails on PC1. Okay, is the last step. Ping from PC1 to PC4. Click the new button under the Scenario 0 drop down tab. Okay, and where is that? Uh, expand this. Okay, this. Expand this. Okay, and click on new. Now the simulation panel is empty. Okay, clicking new. Simulation panel is empty and now at simple PDU source PC1 destination PC4. Okay, at simple PDU source PC1 destination PC4. Click PC1 and then click PC4. You can see uh, ICMP and ARP. Capture forward, observe ARP requests as they traverse the network. Capture forward goes to S2, capture forward goes to S1, capture forward S1 sends the PDU to S3 and PC7, capture forward PC4 receives the PDU. The ARP request is an ARP. Capture forward. PC4 and uh, replay S3, S1, S2, and PDU goes to PC1 and it's okay. Were the ping successful? Okay. ICMP is the light ring. So capture forward. Now, this is the ICMP. Once ARP is successful, PC1 sends the ICMP. S1, S2, S1, S3, PC4 receives the ICMP PDU and then replay. Okay, and ICMP is okay. Click again, click again, capture forward, and click here, view previous events. Were the pings successful? Explain. Yes, because PC1 and PC4 both belong to VLAN 10. So the path of the ARP request is the same as before. Because PC4 is the destination, it replays to the ARP request. PC1 is then able to send the ping with the destination MAC address for PC4. Okay, look at uh, PC1 is the source, placing the 172.17.10 network, subnet, subnet mask 24 and PC4, 172.17.10 network, subnet mask 24 both on the same VLAN. 
examine the simulation panel. When the bucket reached S1, why does it also forward the bucket to PC7? Okay, go back, uh, click here, go back, go back, go back, and go to ARP. Okay, and here on this, on this part from S2 to S1, and capture forward, you can see S1 also, S1 sends the PDU to S3, but also to PC7. Okay, so the answer is because PC7 also belongs to VLAN 10, and the IRP request was for VLAN 10. Switches will forward to any devices that are connected to VLAN 10 in the airport because the ARP was a broadcast. Okay, look at this uh, PC7. Also placed on 172.17.10 subnet, subnet mass 24. And PC7 is placed on the same VLAN, uh, PC4 and PC1. Observe broadcast traffic without VLANs. Clear the configurations on all three switches and delete the VLAN database. Return to real time. Okay, click here to return to real time. Delete the startup configuration on all three switches. What command is used to delete the startup configuration of the switches? Okay, for example, go S1. Command line interface. Enter. Okay, go to privilege exit mode. Use enable command. Uh, once you are on privilege exit mode, use erase and start up dash config. Enter. Enter. Okay. So do this on all three switches. Enter. Enable. Erase startup dash config. Enter, enter. S3. Command line interface. Enter. Um, enable. Erase startup dash config. Enter, enter. Where is the VLAN file stored in the switches? Okay, how you can see uh, where is the VLAN database? Go to S1, show flash. Show flash. And this is the, the this is the file VLAN dot that. It's placed on flash and the file is VLAN dot that. Okay, the let VLAN file on all three switches. What command the let the VLAN file store it in the switches? Okay, on S1, you can do the let VLAN dot dot enter, enter, enter. S2, the let VLAN dot dot uh, dot dot enter, enter, enter. S3. Let VLAN dot dot enter enter enter. Reload the switches. Use the reload command on privilege exit mode to reset all the switches. Wait for okay. As um, one reload enter enter. S two enter reload enter enter. S three Enter, reload, enter, enter. Wait for the entire link to turn green. Okay, and wait for the green indicators. Now they are orange, but wait for the green triangles, the green indicators.
Okay, if this indicator is still orange, okay, go to S3 and you can see spanning three block blocking facet terminal three, facet, facet terminal three, inconsistent port type, okay, enter and enable privilege exit mode and reload again, enter, enter, enter. Okay, very nice. Now all indicators are green, all lights are green. And now click Capture Forward to send ARP request and pings. After the switch is reload and the link light return to green, the network is ready to forward your ARP and ping traffic. Select a scenario zero. Down here, select a scenario zero. Okay, to return a scenario zero from simulation mode. Okay, click simulation mode. Okay, now you can see the same scenario. Okay, the previous scenario and capture forward. Capture forward. Capture forward, okay, S2 sends to all its ports, S1 receives, and capture forward, S1 sends to all its ports, S3 receives the PDU, and S3 sends to all its ports. Capture forward, okay. Click again. Click again. Notice that the switches now forward the ARP request to all ports, except the port on which the ARP request was received. This default action of switches is why VLANs can improve network performance. Broadcast traffic is contained within each VLAN. When the buffer full window appears, click the view previous events button. Okay, click here. View previous events. If a PC in VLAN 10 sends a broadcast message, which devices receive it? Okay, all devices. The answer is all devices on VLAN 10. Okay, PC1, PC7, PC4. If a PC in VLAN 20 sends a broadcast message, which devices receive it? All devices that are on VLAN 20. Okay, for example, PC2, PC8, PC5. If a PC in VLAN 30 sends a broadcast message, which devices receive it? All devices that are on VLAN 30. What happens to a frame sent from a PC in VLAN 10 to a PC in VLAN 30? Okay. It will be dropped. Okay, it will be discarded. In terms of ports, what are the collision domains on the switch? Each port is a separate collision domain. In terms of ports, what are the broadcast domains on the switch? They are divided by the number of VLANs in the switch. Okay, thank you very much.